This week, Apple held the Worldwide Developer Conference. If you're not familiar with that, it's where Apple introduces the new features that's gonna be coming to their devices. There's a complete redesign to the operating systems across all their devices. The iPad gains real multitasking support and some other features that will make it a great computer alternative for a lot of people and uh, some other nice updates. But there were also a lot of updates that I think are really kind of niche updates that that, um, I don't think that a lot of people are going to use. So I'm making this video to share with you the highlights of features that I can see getting the most use for iPhones, iPads, and the Mac. That way you don't have to sit through an hour and 45 minute keynote about features you probably will never use. So this year, Apple moved over to using a year-based numbering for their operating system. So everything is 26. iOS 26, iPad OS 26, blah, blah, blah. Now, the biggest change to all the devices is the new redesign. Apple's calling it liquid glass. And the idea is there's a much more glass-like appearance to icons and menu over you'll find that you'll open up menus or options and it looks like transparent glass put over whatever you're looking at. It's really the most noticeable on iPads and iPhones. Now let's talk about the iPhone first with iOS 26. The thing I liked about this is the new liquid glass look. I like that there's more customization. I'm taking advantage of the clear icons now, but you can go in and you could create tinted icons and really customize the color of things. There are some people who aren't enjoying the new glass look because of the way it stacks on top of other things and can be difficult to read. There's an option I haven't played with yet that will get rid of the transparent uh, menus and go back to a frosted look. Now the upgrade I like the most and one I could see a lot of people using is the upgrades to the camera app. Before, when you would look at it, you had all the different modes um, right there where it's sitting cinematic, slow-mo, all those things. Um, now you have a photo and video mode. You could swipe to the right and get to those other ones if you need to, but by default, you're looking at the two modes you're gonna use most. The other thing I like is you can access the different settings easier and the different uh, formats that you wanna use. So you hit the right button and there you can make the adjustments that I don't think a lot of people knew existed on the uh, camera app. And then you go to the left side and you can pick 4K, 1080p. You wanna go 4K 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. It's all there and easy to get to. I appreciate this because I use my iPhone all the time to shoot videos for these YouTube videos and I will go into those different settings. Now a feature that I think a lot of people can appreciate is there's also a clean camera hint feature. And what this will do is it will let you know if your camera lenses are dirty. That way you don't end up taking a picture with a thumbprint right over the lens and it doesn't turn out well. Overall, I feel like the camera app has become more useful and intuitive. And across the board, I feel like Apple has gotten rid of things that you don't use as much and they've also made it easier to get to those things when you do need them, especially when we get to talking to, about the iPad. Another upgrade and use for the camera that I like is visual intelligence. You can now use visual intelligence with stuff on your screen. You can take a screenshot, then hit the image search, and it will look for whatever's in the screen, like this wallet, select it on Amazon, and make a purchase. Apple showed taking a screenshot with text, and the add to calendar popped up. You can also take a screenshot and ask questions. Another Apple intelligence feature that I like is coming to the Reminders app, and that will give you suggestions based on common tasks you may do, or um, if you have an email or a text, it can give you a follow-up suggestions. Like, hey, respond to that email finally. Well, the software upgrades I do like too, since I use my camera a lot for video, is the update to the photo app. In the photo app now, they got rid of that convoluted screen uh, that they had and went back to your library and collections. So for a lot of people, they're just gonna want that library to see what they shot recently. But if you wanna get into your favorites or folders or any of that stuff, 
you hit the collection button. Another upgrade for the iPhone that I like is to Safari. They basically fill the screen. And when you bring up a menu, it takes advantage of that liquid glass and a more minimal design to not cover things up as much. Now, some of the new features that I don't personally care about, um, but you might, uh, Apple did a redesign of the phone app. So everything is pretty much there on the one screen. You have your favorites there, your recent calls, you'll see your voicemails on that screen. And again, they've simplified and put the things you're gonna use more frequently right in front of you, instead of having to flip over the different tabs. Now for messages, they did some upgrades. You can now put custom backgrounds in your messages. You can conduct polls. Um, they got the gen emoji going on, gen emoji, emoji, whatever it's called. I could not care less about that. I feel like that's probably the least useful use of AI. And they've added that like across the board to the iPad and the Macs and yeah. Apple Music's on update with lyric translations and karaoke using your iPhone as a mic. I definitely don't care about that. Um, we also have live translation. So if you do speak with someone in a foreign language, it'll do a live translation on phone calls, FaceTime calls, and in messages. Now, for those of you who like to snooze, you can now customize the snooze time and you're not stuck with the nine minutes. You can now go between one and 15 minutes. So if you're a snoozer, that might be nice. Those are the useful and maybe not so useful updates. Now to take advantage of those, Here's a list of the different devices that'll support iOS 26. You can pause it, see if your device is on there. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That way you can check out future videos. I do have one coming out talking about the smart home or the lack of talk about the smart home this year. Um, so you don't wanna miss that. Next, the iPad. It saw pretty much all the same updates. You have the liquid glass look, um, gen emojis, all just everything I listed before, you got that. The important one that, that really I think is gonna be a game changer, especially for people who don't need a Mac, it is the new multitasking. You have way more freedom than you've ever had in a Mac. You can now just stack a bunch of windows on top of each other. You can resize them. You're not, it's not going to pop to predetermined sizes like it did before. Um, you can even move windows off the screen. So if you just want to drag something over, it's easy enough to do. You also have the red, yellow, and green buttons in the upper left hand corner of a window to close that window or minimize it. Or if you hit the green button, you see the different view options you can do on there. For the first time, the windows are acting very Mac like. Another Mac like feature that I think is great is the menu options across the top of a window. So instead of having to hit three dots and go into sub menus and all that, across the top, if you uh, swipe down, you can see menu options that you would expect to find on a Mac. Another Mac-like feature is the updates to the files app. It really behaves like a Mac when going through your files. You can uh, recolor your folders and put emojis on them, which I think it's cool to identify stuff easier. You can even drag folders out of the files app and put it into the dock. They also introduced a new preview app to open up PDFs and be able to mark them up. It's really pretty nice. Another huge upgrade that we never thought would come to an iPad is a calculator. It's only taken like 10 years, 15 years, I don't know, uh, to get a calculator on the iPad. Another addition, and they added this to the Mac too, is the journal app, which I thought was kind of cool on my phone. I would use that to kind of log different things. I think it's great now to be able to use that on the iPad, and you could even use it with the pencil. So keep track of more memories and thoughts and stuff. When it comes to the features I'm not gonna really use, they're basically the same as the iPhone. You got the new message features that are basically the same. There's a new game app, which gaming on an iPad, I could kinda, I, I don't game on an iPad. And the features that come with it, I feel like casual gamers aren't gonna use. And hardcore gamers, they, it lacks the really good games that you would wanna have. Another feature I personally don't see using, but I think it's, it's cool, it's uh, being able to make phone calls from your iPad using the phone app. You know, you just hit the buttons, hold it up to your ear, 
No, you don't have to do that. You also have the live translations for messages, uh, phone calls, and FaceTime calls. And uh, there's some others, I forget what they all are. Now to take advantage of the most amount of features, you're gonna wanna have an iPad with an M1 chip or newer. Here's the list of supported iPads. You can pause to see if yours is on it. Next is Mac OS 26 also known as Tahoe. I would say the Mac saw the least useful upgrades or the smallest amount of upgrades. It did get the whole redesign uh, with liquid glass. It, you can customize your icons. I'm using the whole clear option now. Um, but I feel like liquid glass isn't as noticeable on the Mac. You also have the option to recolor your folders and put emojis on them. I've started taking advantage of that to make things pop better. One of the features I like is iPhone mirroring. You can uh, mirror your iPhone, have it right there up on your screen, and be able to access your different apps. You could even get some of the live updates and notifications from your phone to pop up right on your Mac. You just click on the iPhone mirroring, you'll see your phone in a window, and if you open your phone, it will just turn that off. I don't use Spotlight that much, but if you are a Spotlight user, there's a lot more functionality. It takes advantage of Apple intelligence too. So you can write a short email right from the Spotlight line. There's also shortcut updates that take advantage of Apple intelligence more. I need to dive in and play with those. I definitely don't know enough about them. They've also added the journal app to the Mac too. A new addition that I like is you can quickly access your most recent apps by just doing a four finger pinch on a trackpad and you'll see a small window there to access the things that you might want quickly. Another update I like is to the control center. I never really used that but now you could customize it with more actions and it acts more like an iPhone or an iPad so you have quick access to uh, apps that you want or to uh, your smart devices and trigger a scene. It really opens up more functionality instead of it just being there. But uh, you have all the different message updates. You can make phone calls from your Mac. What am I forgetting? Uh, you have live translation, uh, just like the other devices. Those are kind of the big ones that stood out to me. It's nice. The Mac is taking more of the iPhone and iPad features and implementing them. Now, this is going to be the last OS that's going to support Intel Macs. So beyond this, uh, next year, you're going to need to have an M1 uh, Mac or higher. Here's the list of supported Macs that will work with a Mac OS 26. Next, the Apple Watch. Uh, there weren't a lot of big updates that to this that I thought uh, was cool. Um, let's, I'll start off with one that I never see using. It is the Workout Buddy. You can have a Workout Buddy. You can uh, have a voice that's going to encourage you and let you know that you're making records time and that was a good workout. This is uh, using Apple's AI which uh, another one that I'm like this is your best use for AI creating a workout buddy that's just gonna tell you nice things to keep you going. Yay! Now one of the updates I do like is the notes app is finally coming to the Apple Watch. You can input notes or just be able to reference a note that you have. Maybe you made a little to-do list on it. Just open that note up. It's one of the apps that I wish I had, especially when I wanted to jot down some ideas. You can do scribble with it. You could use your voice. Yeah, I wrote this whole script with my Apple Watch talking to the note app. I didn't really, but if I wanted to, I could. One that could be useful, depending on which developers take advantage of it, is being able to add third-party app shortcuts into the control center. So when you push the button on the right, instead of just seeing Apple's options there, maybe jump into an app that you use frequently right from there. A new notification feature is being able to flick your wrist to get rid of a notification that pops up. There's also a, a smart step stack, which means if you roll the crown up and you see the different stacks that you put on there, the widgets, there's a smart one that can make suggestions uh, to you. That smart stack is going to serve up suggestions of things based on your normal usage. This could come in handy. Let's say it's 4 p.m. 
your watch knows you haven't started a workout and it can pop up, say, get your butt on the treadmill. I'm sure they'll do it more politely than that. After seeing this year's developer conference, I would say there are some nice updates, you know, with the strongest being the update to the iPad. It is gonna be a far more useful device. The next big thing, I think, other than that redesign and things looking more cohesive across the ecosystem, it's the fact that so many of these updates are the same across the different devices. One thing that's still missing is a smarter, more personalized Siri and more Apple intelligence features. I did make a video on Apple intelligence when they introduced it last year. So if you want to see what Apple was planning for Apple intelligence, I'll put that video in the description. Now you could take advantage of these new features in the fall when the new OS is officially released or in July, public betas are going to be available. If you'd like to take advantage of these features now, you're going to need to sign up for the developer beta, which you have to pay $99 dollars a year. Now, what new features sound good to you? Let us know in the comment section. If I missed a good feature, also put that in the comment section. Now, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing, check out future videos. And if you can, give this one a like, a thumbs up. It definitely helps out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.